good morning today we'll study about rigid rotator application of quantum mechanics to rigid rotator problem let us apply the postulates of quantum mechanics to solve the rigid rotator okay now what is rigid rotator let us consider a diatomic molecule let us consider a linear diatomic molecule with the intermediate distance d or r okay r and for linear uh, diatomic molecule how many degrees of freedom rotational degrees of freedom how many rotational freedom, degrees of freedom we have already studied in one of uh, the previous video there are two degrees of freedom rotational degrees of freedom how many vibrational degrees of freedom how many rotational degrees of freedom how many translational we have already discussed it. please see the video there are two rotational degrees of freedom because in the molecule the, the diatomic molecule rotates about an axis about an axis perpendicular to the intermediate axis therefore there are two kinds of rotation rotation about the z axis the molecule the, it will be rotating like this this uh, this is along the intermediate axis this rotation is not considered only rotation about the this axis okay and similarly this axis so there are two type two rotational degrees of freedom about an axis perpendicular to the perpendicular to the intermediate axis that is y and the z okay now in this case the center of gravity of the molecule is at the center if it is a homo nuclear diatomic molecule the center of gravity is present at the center this is the center of gravity okay now let us see let us apply the quantum mechanics to solve the rigid rotator problem for example h square psi equal to e psi this is one of the postulate of uh, quantum mechanics eigen value equation cardinal value equation okay where h square is the total energy operator i is the wave function to describe the rigid rotator uh, molecule and the e is the energy the energy levels obtained by solving this equation the energy levels are nothing but rotational energy levels uh, this is the basis of uh, rotational spectrum uh, it occurs in microwave region of uh, microwave region of uh, spectrum okay therefore it is called it is also called microwave spectroscopy or rotational spectroscopy in the case of uh, rigid rotator the hamiltonian operator is the sum of kinetic energy operator and the potential energy operator okay therefore in, the, in this case the potential energy is equal to zero because there is no force acting on the rigid rotator there is there is no force acting on the rotator okay therefore potential energy is assumed to be zero and why it is called rigid rotator because the intermediate distance does not change during the rotation during the rotation motion there is no change in the intermediate distance okay now let us uh, kinetic energy operate kinetic energy equal to half mv square you have studied in terms of linear momentum in terms of linear velocity in terms of or angular rotational motion in the case of rotational motion you will have angular momentum therefore in angular momentum m corresponds to you go back and see angular momentum operator i have described and i have derived the angular momentum operators okay m corresponds to i where i is m r square where i is m r square m in this case m is reduced to mass because there are two atoms m equal to reduced to mass mu equal to m1 m2 mass of the particle 1 mass of the particle 2 divided by m1 plus m2 okay so that omega this is linear velocity this is angular velocity uh, omega is the angular velocity mm -hmm. this is the rotational motion okay now similar to kinetic energy equal to uh, multiply m numerator and denominator therefore m Uh, v whole square that is uh, p linear momentum m v is linear momentum p square by l the similarly linear momentum here l cap square angular momentum square divided by m corresponds to i so you multiply this equation by 
multiply numerator and denominator by i. Therefore, i omega whole square divided by 2i, that is l cap square equal to 2i, that is equal to h cap. Now, we have obtained the Hamiltonian operator. Hamiltonian operator. Okay, now, how to solve the Hamiltonian, the Schrodinger wave equation, we will see. Here, i equal to moment of inertia, omega equal to angular velocity. For example, you have um, a particle here, the particle here in terms of partition coordinates, the position is uh, represented by x comma y comma z. Okay, position is represented by the partition coordinates. This uh, Schrodinger wave equation cannot be solved easily by using partition coordinates. Therefore, because uh, it is involving rotational motion, we need to use angular motion. We need to use the spherical polar coordinates. What is spherical polar coordinates? We will see. This is the radius vector. For example, the molecule here, the center of gravity, uh, center of gravity, this is radius vector, um, correspond to x, and theta, theta is the angle between the angle between the radius vector and the z axis. This is like the f, the north pole, south pole, therefore theta, this is theta. And this is, if you project this point in the xy plane, you have xy plane, if you project on, you will get i. Therefore, this, the angle between this and the x-axis is called azimuthal angle. It's called an azimuthal angle. This is theta is the polar angle or theta p. Okay. The, the limiting values of, the limiting, the range, the range of values of r can be, the values of r can be 0 to infinity. It can be 0 to infinity. And theta equal to, for example, theta, this is uh, z axis, you will have z axis, theta equal to 0 to pi. That is 180, this is 90, this is another. P equal to, this is um, in the plane, therefore, P equal to 0 to 2 pi. That will be complete rotation. Therefore, the range of values, the range of values for P, asymptotal angle equal to 0 to 2 pi. Okay, now, in terms of spherical polar coordinates, we have already seen the angular momentum square. Okay, in terms of uh, Cartesian coordinates. Now, in terms of um, spherical polar coordinates, it is written as h minus. This is given in Clark's table. It is given in Clark's table. We will not see how it is derived uh, because in, in chemistry, in physics. We are more interested in the, the result, the result uh, that is the energy values, uh, how the spectrum is obtained, how the spectrum is obtained. Therefore, uh, we will take it from Clark's table, this one, minus uh, x cross square, 1 by sin theta, down by 2 theta, bracket sin theta, down by 2 theta, bracket root plus 1 by sin square theta, down square dou square p, okay, and this is uh, equation number 1 and this is equation number 2. Okay, now let us see uh, L cap square, let us substitute here, L cap square, let us substitute in this expression, L cap square 2i, and then we substitute here, okay. Therefore, what you will get is minus h cap square uh, divided by 2i, okay. So, sin 1 by sin theta, same integration, 1 dou by dou theta, sin theta, dou by Dou psi, okay, you are multiplied by psi, therefore dou psi by dou theta and by psi square theta, dou square psi by dou square p equal to e psi. Okay, this is the expression, substitution expression. Now, there are um, the total wave function, the total wave function is a function of the total wave, the total wave function for the rigid rotator is a function of theta and p. Since all is constant, since all is constant, it depends only on the total wave function, depends only on theta from azimuth angle and polar angle. Okay, therefore, the, uh, the total wave function is uh, written as the product of uh, theta wave function and p wave function. Okay, the product of theta wave function, product of theta and uh, p wave function is called spherical harmonic effect. For example, for a particle in a one dimensional box, uh, uh, for a particle in a one dimensional 
in one dimensional box depends only on one coordinate x. Whereas for, for a particle in a three dimensional box, it depends on the uh, x, y either. Therefore, psi of x, psi of y, psi of z. Similarly, the wave function is, uh, the total wave function is split. Okay, now, if you look at this equation, it, uh, you, can, you cannot be solved because theta, theta and t are in the same sign. Now, we need to separate the variables. Uh, that is theta separate and t separate. Theta separate and t separate. Therefore, separation of variables, how it is this uh, carried out? By simple mathematical manipulation. For example, if you 4, what is 4? Four, 4, this is 4. You substitute 4 in 3. Substitute 4 in 3. Okay. Psi, you put psi, this way psi, this, uh, this one, and this one, and here, this one. Okay. And then multiply by sine square theta. Why do you multiply by sine square theta? Why do you multiply by sine square theta? Because uh, if you multiply, it will cancel. Therefore, this will be depend only on t. Okay. That is our separation of variables. We need to separate theta and t. Therefore, when you multiply by the whole equation by the whole equation, this time, this time, sine square theta, and this term will depend only on p and this term will depend only on theta. Okay, so now we have separated the variables. That is our a. That is our a. Okay, therefore, substitute 4, 4 in 3 and multiply by sine square theta and divide by, further divide by the wave function. Divide the total wave function theta. Okay, on substituting and the multiplication followed by division, you will get this sine theta because you are multiplying by sine square theta. And you take this uh, here, you take this uh, equation here, 2i by this cross by here, okay. Therefore, sine theta, sin, you are multiplying by sine square theta, therefore uh, sine theta will get cancelled, sine theta divided and you are multiplying by theta p, therefore theta p will get cancelled, p will get Cancel here, therefore, rho by rho theta, sin theta, rho capital theta by rho theta plus, and you are bringing here and you, you take this inside here, okay, minus, uh, therefore, 8 pi square ie, that is h cross equal to, h cross equal to, what is h cross? h pi 2 pi, h pi 2 pi, therefore, h cross pi equal to h square by uh, 4 pi square, 4 pi square because when 2 is there, it will become 8. 8 pi square i e divided by h square sin square theta equal to, okay, equal to you take this equation this side. Therefore, what you will get is 1 by capital T rho square p because uh, you are substituting this here, rho square p. This theta divided when you divide by this, theta will get answer. Therefore, 1 by p rho square p by rho p square. Okay, now, as you, as you see, left hand side depends only on theta, right hand side depends only on t, therefore we have separated the variables by doing this operation. Okay, we have separated the variables, we have got two equations, the, each equation depends only on one variable, for example, the left hand side equation depends only on theta. The right hand side equation depends only on t. Okay. Now therefore, for example, now let us take left hand side. Left hand side depends on theta, right hand side depends on t. Therefore, uh, t, there is no theta here. Therefore, this is constant for t. For left hand side, it does, this does not depend on t. Therefore, this is constant. N square. We call it n square. Similarly, this depends, uh, the, left, the right hand side depends only on p, it does not depend on theta, therefore the whole term will be constant. Therefore, the left hand side equal to right hand side equal to m square, where m square equal to constant. We take m square as constant. Okay, next, the 8 pi square i e by h square is, is uh, called a constant, because i is moment of inertia for a molecule is constant, energy, energy value is also constant, Planck's constant, then you will get this. We'll keep it this one. Next, let us solve the 
left hand side and right hand side. In this, uh, in part one, in this lecture, we will solve the right hand side equation that is very easy to solve. Uh, for example, minus 1 by t d square, this is uh, uh, only this depends only on y input d, this depends only on t. Therefore, d square t by d t square equal to m square. On rearranging this equation, d square t by d t square plus m square character t equal to 0. This is nothing but your second order differential equation. Uh, by using simple mathematics, by using simple mathematics, the second order differential equation can be solved to give um, d square y by d x d x square you know, study d square y by d x square. Uh, therefore, t equal to n e power plus or minus i m t. For i is the imaginary number, i equal to square root of minus 1, m is the asymmetric quantum number, where m is the asymmetric quantum number. The wave function, now we have obtained the asymmetric wave function. We have obtained that in the next class, we will solve the left hand side, we will obtain the um, polar wave function, theta. Theta polar wave function, thus we have obtained that n is the normalization constant. The wave function is the ideal wave function only when m can have value 3. Okay? The well accepted the wave function is well behaved only when m can have the values m equal to 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 plus or minus 3, etc. Okay, so we have now obtained uh, the wave function. See the wave function. In next class, we will obtain the energy values, thereby the rotational energy values and the rotational spectrum we will complete in the next class. Thank you for watching.